make me do this. Not this. I've not forgotten what I owe you. I would do anything for you, anything in my power. The point is, how do I know that this was within my power? Oh, I know. I know you've always said that I could do anything. You've always held my power up to me. How you mothered me. The last of my mothers. The one who gave me life. The one who nurtured what was given and the one who saved my life. So yes, I've always said for you, I do anything, anything I could. But this, to call her to this room, to share this room with her, to open that Pandora's box, no, it's not the metaphor. I know what's in there. I'm not curious. I shut that box and kept it shut for 40 years. I never told you what she did, what she became, or maybe she reveled in it. What I hadn't seen in my lust, to me, longing to be loved. I thought it best to leave some space inside that thumping motherhood of yours. Some space where what you did for her was worth your life. Some space where she was still the girl she'd been back then. The girl you loved. The girl I, I. What makes you think that she would even come? After all these years, avoiding you, avoiding the truth. Even if she comes, what then? What do you expect? An apology? What words could it compensate, repair, make, make it whole? I should have known it would come down to this. Blood. All those years you called me your beloved child. Claimed to love me like your own. Showed me the fool. This is truth. On your deathbed, whose presence do you crave? Whose voice? The last bird song, the last vibration in a cavern of your skull. Whose touch will bring release? I remember what you asked me to do, to put you in an old rowboat, no oars, and send you on the water, silver plate, until you faded in the mist. That I would do for you. But this, please, please, not this. actually came. Excuse me? I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't. Yes, you no. do. Oh. Well, they told me, they, they said, oh, they said it was my mother. I, I knew it had to be a, well, she couldn't be. I mean, nobody lives that long out in prison. I, I've assumed for years that she, <laughs> mix up, mix up, that's it. It's a mix up. I, I should have, they always, Always oh, these people, the, the, the bureaucracy, bureaucrats, they always get wrong. Not this time. This is not happening. This is not happening. This is not real. No. This is happening, but it's not what you think. <laughs> Don't go there. there. There is an explanation. The world is explainable. I'm sorry. Uh, I must be in the wrong room. They told me my mother was here, but I, I must have gotten the wrong room. And 
well, you reminded me of someone I once knew a long, long time ago, so, um, excuse me, I'll just, <laughs> just sorry for the interruption from the crazy lady, never mind me. You aren't in the wrong room. This is your mother, and yes, it's me. Someone you once knew. Unfortunately, it can. <laughs> you? But why? What? What? Do you, what? Do you, what? 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 what I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Don't. <laughs> can you take a breath for one second? Stop thinking about yourself. Whatever it is, you don't. And look at your mother. She's here, as you hear yourself, I'm sure. You asked for this. Good luck. No, I didn't agree to do that. You knew the terms I set. I'll be back. Well, wait, wait, you can't just, you can't just leave without the world is explainable, one thing at a time. You can do it. And just, okay, two things, uh, just two things. First, <clears throat> to confirm, you're telling me that's my mother? Confirmed. But it's, it's not. Well, she can hear you. She may be blind, but she can't hear. Did you? Did I what? Nothing. Never mind. I hesitate to ask, but are you okay? Should I call for help? Yes. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'll be okay if I can. I said two things. I need to know. Why you? I mean, are you the owner of this place? Or, or the, the CEO? Or the manager? Now, obviously, you're not a, I don't know, an aide, nurse, whatever. <laughs> obviously. And no, I'm not <laughs> any of those things. Then, what are you doing here with my mother? If that's who she is, if this isn't some kind of a convoluted... Don't go there, don't go there. Right. Don't go there. Instead, you might consider this. Might ask this yourself. Why is this interrogation, this search for explanation, so important to you? More critical than even giving your mother the one thing she desires before she dies? How do you know what she desires? She told me. Didn't you, Mama Bim? I thought you said she couldn't hear. She can. She's being coy. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not much what I'm asking for, just an explanation. There must be a. But this is not coincidence. You hurt me. This is not a movie or a dream or my imagination, I think. <laughs> anyway, I need to know. What's going on? Otherwise, yes. Otherwise, I won't be okay. I need to know why you are here. What is your connection to my mother? I need an explanation. Bravo for you for stating your needs so clearly. Nevertheless, I also have needs. And I need a cigarette. I need to leave this room now. That's not fair. Mm. You can't without... You know what's going on. I don't. It's not a... A level playing field? Then just tell me. Then you can go. Why are you here? She asked me to bring you here. She insisted. Called in a long due debt. It was you? You put the notice said... The Department of Corrections, they said, compassionate release. They said, 
the only living family member. They said, well, imperative that I come to. I know what the notice said. Believe me, CDCR does not have the resources or the inclination, or for that matter, to track down a daughter who has not once visited, called, or sent so much of a postcard to her incarcerated mother, particularly when someone else has stepped up to provide care. How do you know what I've done? Or not. Your mother told me, every time I called, every time I visited, not that I asked, but as if I had, she always said, no, she hasn't. No, not yet. She never gave up hope. What were you doing visiting my mother? Uh, how do you even... You never met her. She was already in jail when you and I... Oh, oh, oh okay, okay, I get it. I know what's going on. I didn't want to go there, but it's the only explanation. Now you pique my curiosity. Do tell. It was a con. Uh, <laughs> you sought her out. She wouldn't have been hard to find. <laughs> you befriended her, gained her trust. Oh, she was so, so, so <laughs> willing to look the other way when someone she loved lied to her. Seriously? What is the con? Well, what would I gain? Revenge. How do I... And you imagine that that would work. Well, you, you befriend her, and then uh, when they're going to let her out, uh, to a compassionate release, not parole, because she's, she's, oh, she's like that, and, and, and uh, they, they don't want to pay for it. So, so they'll let her out, and, 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 and cause you befriended her. And she, she put you on a list or something, so, the, so you're here, and then you get me to come here somehow. Oh, oh, oh. Of course, it was you. You just admitted it was you. You forged the notice you sent for me. So you could, so you could. Yes, so I could what? I don't know, or hurt me somehow. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, how it plays out, but I don't know exactly how, but somehow. I know you have a plan. <laughs> you always had a plan. <laughs> yeah, your plans were so good. You were so good at spinning out your story about your plans. How we were going to take New York. How you were going to become a famous, great singer, and I was going to be a great writer. And we were going to have this amazing life. And... <laughs> That's so funny. You are too much. <laughs> Don't suck your teeth at me. I see your paranoia hasn't diminished over the years. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean... <laughs> <laughs> Stop! We're being trailed! What? See that guy? No, no, don't look! Well, how can I see him if I don't look? Look inside <laughs> one. Across the street, in the hat. Okay, I see him, so what? He's a cop. Undercover. Doesn't he? He's trailing us. You're being paranoid. He stopped, we did. Hmm, doesn't he look like a cop? Why would a cop be trailing? There's a warrant. What? Sharon said. How did you I know? I called. Collect. I told I you not to. I know what happened with the trial. What does that guy have to do with There's that? There's a warrant out for your arrest, she said. But well, why would there be a... Kidnapping. You are being paranoid. Well, check it out. Come on. Start walking fast. <laughs> See? He speeded up when we did. You're paranoid. Now look. We stopped. He stopped. Here, cover up. I can't breathe. I'm trying to protect you. Get off. I'm trying to protect Get off. I can't. No, let me. Let me. No, get off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? He's gone. You're so paranoid. I'm not. What happened? No, I put him off the trail. With the trial? Oh, they convicted her. She's in prison now. 
a life. Saying something? What's she saying? I don't know. She stopped speaking weeks ago. Stopped eating too. Her last words were, I'm exhausted with existing. Nevertheless, her heart beats on. For you, I must suppose. Her heart beats on for you. The daughter she was waiting for. So once again, I'll leave you two alone. Is it really you? I can't. I mean, I mean, look at you. Well, how can you look at you? I, I don't. I don't see. I don't see mom in there. Mom? 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 Mom, can you hear me? Can you hear me? How do I know it's you? Whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on? It's nothing. It, shouldn't we get a nurse, or? She's being dramatic. Well, no, she could be having a stroke, or? She's fine. Aren't you, Mama Bim? <laughs> she just wants her way. Yeah, but what, what's that? What does she want? Why don't you ask her? You said she's not talking. I suspect she's saving her voice. For what? You tell me. You're the daughter. Yeah, but what's with Mama Bim? It's what the women called her. What women? In her unit, the other inmates. Hey, but her name's Louise. Where'd Vin come from? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. She loved that name. Vengeance? Is that supposed to be a joke about what she did? No, not a joke. She wielded power in that place, even with the guards, a kind of power no one could describe. How do you know all this? You still haven't told me the deal with you and her? You can't like, pull my strings, drag me in here without telling me what's going on. That should be obvious. Your mother wants to see you before she passes. <laughs> her long, estranged, beloved child. But I get that she would want to see me. I'm not that dumb. What I don't get is why you're here. Why does that matter? Your mother wants you here. And here you are. If you can actually manage to stay in the room with her for more than 30 seconds. But the only reason I'm here is because you're here. Because you have some kind of a connection to my mother. And that has to be because of the connection you and I had. So even if you leave the room, you'd still be here. What exactly do you want? I want to know. Why you? How you? How you met her? How you got close to her? And why? And what would that do for you? If I have an explanation, if I know it's real, real life, outside my head, then I can deal. Or I can try. I can do what I'm here for, apparently. To be in the room with her. Oh, baby doll. That was always your weakness, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> I can't sleep. Again? Tell me a story. Oh, baby doll. Not now. Let me sleep at least. Please. Pretty please. I'll make it worth your while. Oh, really? How? I'll do that thing you love the most. That thing that makes you sing. With your tongue inside? All the way. I've been working out, see? 
oh my, oh my. <laughs> Story time. Once upon a time, snuggle, snuggle. Once upon a time, there were two girls. No, not girls, young women. These were girls. It was the 60s still, 68 to be exact. And they were teens. Just barely. Only one of them just barely. The younger was 16. Oh, just a child. <laughs> they were still innocent. No, their innocence was stripped away. Well, like they've been stopped. <laughs> yes, just. <laughs> All blood and bloody flesh and naked skulls. Ew. Ew, <laughs> but they stitched each other up. With big needles. Stitch, stitch, stitch. <laughs> <laughs> Till they were quilts. Ooh, like grandma's quilts from scraps. They were scrappy girls. They were orphans, orphan nannies. Almost orphans. Motherless, fatherless, grandmotherless. But they had each other. And together they set out their epic quest to find the lost princess. To find the promised land across the continent, across the wilderness, oh, where they encountered wild beasts and monstrous monsters who wanted to devour them. Oh, eat their heads off. Chomp, chomp, chomp. But the scrappy girls, they survived. Ooh. Made it to the promised land, just barely. <sighs> Hungry, <sighs> tired, <sighs> and cold. But they had each other. And their stories. Mm -hmm. And their tongues. <clears throat> expensive bottle and a long night. I don't drink anymore. Or do drugs. Oh, yes. oh, don't suck your teeth at me. You think I'm the same person I was 40 years ago? I'm not the same person I was four years ago. And what about you? Do you have to have a drink to tell the truth? To show the tiniest crack in your armor? It was a coincidence. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wait, you bumped into my mother in prison. You don't look like an ex-con. What does an ex-con look like? Uh, point. I was a lawyer, almost, studying for the bar. But hmm. well, what happened to your great singing career? You. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew you'd go there. You want the story or not? Yeah, go on. It was an internship, interviewing women in prison for killing their abusers, a kind of early innocence project. Hey, my father did not abuse my mother. Right. He abused your sister. To be precise, he raped your sister, got her pregnant. Me. <laughs> Let's not go there. You knew her name. That wasn't a coincidence. Stone? No, not quite uncommon, that surname. But you saw the file, right? <laughs> Pastor's wife poisons Pastor? With Oleander? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot that part. Don't tell me you forgot my story. It's still all about you, I see. You knew who she was. Admit it. Yes, I knew. Point of view? Then why, if not revenge? Curiosity. All I was, <laughs> all I knew was your story. And as witnesses go, you were not the most reliable. Yeah, what were you curious about? How far the apple fell from the tree. You always said she was crazy. <laughs> she was? If so, incarceration has salutary impact on her mental health. Probably because she couldn't get her Valium inside. 
You'd be surprised what you can get inside. Did you tell her who you were? If you mean who I was with you, or had been once, I didn't need to tell. She knew. I never told her about you. Of course you didn't. Bet you bet. Oh, ha! I know how she knew. I bet it was my brother. He must have told her about you. After we ran away, he must have said your name. You know, he had the cops on us. <laughs> oh, on me? I was the adult yeah. in the eyes of the law. <laughs> Funny. Now, I always figured, I don't know, I figured you had wiped me out of your head. It's you called good at that. survival. Yeah, you don't have to tell me about survival or dissociation. You're right. I did set aside the memory of you for five years. The same amount of time we were together. But when I saw like her name... five years? How did you get through college and law school and... You didn't even have a high school diploma when we ran away. Me neither, thanks to you. Have you actually spent the last 40 years blaming me for your educational deficits? Oh, have you actually spent the last 40 years blaming me for giving up your singing career? As you can see, I've moved on. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see. <coughs> Liar. Oh, the watch, mm, the earrings, even your casual clothes reek of money. You must have switched from defending battered women to rich criminals, drug lords. I gave up criminal law, gave up any notion. It An ambulance chaser, you. <laughs> Hardly. I'm a litigator, plaintiff's counsel, in mass torts. Like what? Large class action lawsuits. I know what mass torts are. I, I may not be a lawyer, but I read the news. I mean what kinds of cases, what defendants. Big tobacco, big chemical, big pharmaceutical. I'm assuming you've read about my cases since you read the news. I never saw your name. I'd have remembered that. I don't give quotes to the media. You never Googled me? No. So, so you, you get these gigantic rewards or settlements and you get to keep, hmm, how much of that money? I'm very good at what I do. And you have no idea how hard I've worked. The price I paid to get where I am. Oh, wow, oh, of course. You're the one paying for this place. Ah, see, that's what I couldn't figure out. And I got the notice, I get, who's paying for that place? Because I looked it up, this is not a Medicaid place. I saw how much they charge, and I thought, geez, who in my mother's life has that kind of money? Now you know. Yeah, what I don't know is why. You told me how you met her, then what? What, you became her bestie just like that for life? Not just like that. Then like what? Suffice to say, I owe your mother a great debt. Mm -hmm. Well, must be great. She's been here five months. <laughs> I checked. And how much they charge for a private room? That's a total of I'm yeah, aware of the total. Yeah, and another thing? If she's been here five months, how come they told me just now? You're not the easiest person to track down. The investigator, one of the best, told me she'd never encountered a target with such a scant digital footprint. Quite an accomplishment. Yeah, thanks. She did turn up hospital records, but they consistently noted address unknown. Curious. Yeah, you can't do that? <laughs> That's illegal. I know my rights. You're such a big time lawyer. You should know about HIPAA. Yes, I do know the law on patient privacy. Nevertheless, I... That's always the way it is with you people. You people? Lawyers, doctors, people in charge. The rules don't apply to you. I'm hardly in charge. Yeah, but nevertheless, thanks to your expensive investigator, you think you know everything about my life. But you won't tell me one simple thing. 
What's the deal between you and my mother? Who is she to you? She saved my life. just by telling me what happened. What are you afraid of? Oh, I could always tell what you were afraid. Nobody else could see it, and you're so good at hiding, but I could tell. I can't. What's wrong? My, my, my voice, I can't. What is it? <coughs> my voice is gone. Oh, what happened? Get out. I can't go on. You're just nervous. No, it's my voice. It's gone. It's normal to be afraid. I'm the first kid. I'm not afraid. Yes, you are. Oh, scary cat. You're nothing but a scaredy cat. Am not. You're the baby doll of a scaredy cat. Am not. <laughs> Prove it then. Get out there and sing. Stop that. Oh. oh, see. Go, go, go. All right, you win. But the story really does call for a bottle. Something good. There's a shop on the corner. <laughs> to your left, healthy spirits. <laughs> you mean a liquor store. Um, it's not your typical corner liquor store. Well, why don't you go? I'm not your secretary. Who uses that word anymore? Yeah, my assistant, whatever. You know what I mean. You want your bottles so much, go okay, get on your own. I'm not going to be part of it. I'm not an alcoholic. You won't be enabling. Hmm. Hmm. Or is it that you would, it would be too difficult for you? You didn't say how long you've been sober. No, Just, I can go to a liquor store without. But if you think you're setting a trap, it won't work. It's just that I don't know why you can't go. I mean, would it be too difficult for you to run your own errand? I can't go because your mother doesn't like being left alone. And speaking of being afraid, apparently you're terrified to be in the, in the room alone with her. Fine, I'll go. They'll be expecting you. They'll know what to give you. And uh... <laughs> they'll charge my card. Are you satisfied now? I'm, I'm talking to her. What more do you want? You must know the cost to tell the tale again. Even after all the reparations, dispositions, the interviews, telling each new therapist again, and again, after it became a transcript, a memory of memories, of memory. And why does she deserve to know? I know. It's your tale, too. So why don't you tell her? Be my guest. Tell it from your point of view. <laughs> Is that a laugh? Oh. That's the first laugh I've heard from you since. When? Right. Since we got the news, compassionate release. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> you know I'm mad at you. That little scheme of yours. Of course I forgive you. What choice do I have? If you can't forgive the dying, you'll carry it forever.
what the sweet always said. I wish you could have known her. Another pastor's wife. You would have loved her. And she you. Mothers number two and three. Oh, what will I do without you? Oh, mama. Oh, mother dear. My dear. What's this? Don't worry. I got your model. <laughs> you weren't kidding about it being expensive kind. Uh, but I figured if you were going to drink, you needed food. Let me guess, you haven't eaten since breakfast? If you even had breakfast? I had a croissant. Ooh, and a cappuccino, right? <laughs> I know you. I got your favorite from that uh, tiny Filipino place, place just past your fancy liquor store. Hmm. How much was it? Um, I have some cash here. Please. Please, I may not have money for your 30-year-old scotch, but I can pay for cheap takeout. Is she asleep? Mmm. As much as you like your food, I never could figure out why you always forgot to eat. I have other things on my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose you thought to ask for a cup at the restaurant? Uh, I did better than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where did you snag them? In the kitchen, downstairs. In the basement, they sure make it hard to find. I'm surprised they let you in. Dinner was served two hours ago. Yeah, never underestimate a manic depressive with white privilege. <laughs> What's left of it? Isn't the accepted term bipolar disorder? Well, that's old already. Now it's bipolar spectrum. <laughs> oh, they'll come up with something else. Me, I like manic depressive. It says what it feels like, and I don't know. Kind of sounds like a superhero, huh? Manic depressive! <laughs> or a horror movie. <laughs> mm. You're welcome. Thank you. You sure you don't want some? It's quite nice. <clears throat> the balance, the smoke, and peat. Mm. So it's worth the price tag? Oh, of course there wasn't one, not on the bottles in the locked case. <laughs> but I asked. Naturally you would, and yes, it's worth it. <laughs> you don't have to take my word. You know, for the record, I'm not clinically paranoid, but if I was, like I said, about laying a trap, you always had to drag me in the mud with you. I'm not laying a trap. And I am far from mud. I just know you. How you like to decline and decline before surrender. How that makes surrender sweeter for you. Or assuages guilt, perhaps. Makes it feel less like free choice. Like I said, I'm not the same person I was 40 years ago. Yeah, I worked hard, too, to get to where I am. It may not look like much to you from your lofty vantage point, but it is to me. And that's why I'm here. Because I'm ready for the next step. My sponsor says I'm ready, and she saved my life, so here I am. And yet you bought two glasses. <laughs> and yet... Point. Point. <laughs> Toast. Spit in your eyes. So, you've got your expensive bottle, your liquid courage. Do I get the story now? It was a rebellion in the prison, or, in the language of those in power, a riot. At 11.15 a.m. on day one, Riders, leaders, here and after RLs, gained control of unit SW14, 
by then, all CEOs had escaped the unit as per protocol. RN, RLs began to, here and after, subject, search for potential host, hostage and came upon intern with inmate 452374, here and after, subject, in an attorney prisoner interview room. Tape from the concealed microphone revealed dissent among RLs. Intern was perceived by some as less than valuable hostage. Subject attempted to intervene. Direct quote, who among you is not a mother? Who among you is not lost? A daughter to forces more powerful than you. Her entity, <coughs> her <coughs> Her entities were successful. Those RLs who had argued against interns' value as a hostage proved to be correct. Department leadership held firm. On day five, intern was observed on the roof from the RLs, which the RLs had been delivering their demands. She was stripped naked, a heavy chain around her ankles. Later, testimony revealed that RLs had arranged this spectacle for the news cameras. It was their belief that a reenactment of the auction block would convey their contention that incarceration functions as, quote, a new slavery. One RL suddenly removed the chain from intern's ankles and proceeded to wield it as a whip across her back. She fell. Other RLs rushed forward. A fight ensued. COs prepared to launch incendiary devices until subject came forward on the roof. She spoke briefly, and after she stopped, RLs formed a circle around her. The discussion appeared to be heated. An RL then called down to request that EMTs enter the building and take the intern out. Ensuing events, the department officers, further negotiations, final resolution, and policy resource response are detailed separately. Uh, I don't. That's right. You don't. So don't. Were they white? Who? The prisoners, the women who did that to you? Does it matter to you? Would the answer to that question affect your understanding of the systematic historical forces behind their actions? We're all puppets in the Punch and Judy show that is in this country. And we shouldn't forget who's pulling the strings. You must have heard what Mom said. I was unconscious at the time. And when the film led the news that night, I was still in surgery. The first of many. You didn't uh, see it later? Did they have VCRs back then? I can't remember. By the time I started looking, the tapes were all recorded over and are degraded. Everyone who claimed to have heard it gave differing accounts. Something about a Bible study. There was consensus about what she said to the rebellion leaders afterwards. She offered to take my place as hostages. She said, I don't think they'll let me die. I may be nothing but a convict to the guards and their bosses, but they'll know. The people watching in their living rooms They'll will see for what they'll see me for what I once was. One of them, a nice white church lady. She never told you what she said to the TV. No, she always says words don't matter in the end. <laughs> Bet you didn't buy that. Of course, words matter. No, I know what she means. 
I need a smoke. Why don't you try again? Uh, <laughs> are you awake? Uh, are you in there? Whoa. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't visit or call or write. I started letters. In the beginning, in New York, she got the address for me. She kept saying, you still have a mother. She kept saying, you'll regret it if you don't. But I didn't know what to say. I mean, dear mom, having a great time, lots of drugs, lots of parties, wild parties in downtown lofts, lots of sex, sex with her, sex with strangers. Keeping up with her and her musician friends. Dear Mom, I miss you. Dear Mom, are you okay? What's it like in prison? No, I didn't ask that. I didn't imagine your life going on. You were stopped for me, frozen. God, mostly I didn't think of you at all. The drugs helped with that. The parties, the sex, the scrambling for the next squat, the next meal. And her, she filled me up, crowded you out. Except in dreams. Was that you coming to me at night? Or was it just me wanting you? And then when it all blew up with her, when I left New York, the thing that came back, just rushing back, wasn't really you. It was just this, this rage. Dear Mom, I was wrong to be so mad at you, at me. No, God, no, I can't do this. I'm not ready. I can't make amends until you didn't have to kill him. You could have just, I don't know, divorced him. I mean, if he really did that to her, if you really just found out the truth, you could have done what normal people do, get divorced, or you didn't have to. And that saying it was all for me. How was I supposed to live with that, huh? Can you hear me? Do, do you hear me? Did you ever hear me? All those years, after she ran away, all those years, you played along with the lie. You pretended not to know. Oh, that was all for me? No, it was for you. Your vengeance against him, it was for you. Uh. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 oh, sorry, sorry, Mom. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. Oh God! Oh no! Oh no! What? Oh, what are you saying? What do you want? But I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What do I do? What do I do? Help! 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 My, my. Oh. I can't. Look, pull yourself together. I can't. Yes, you can. Is she, is she? Her morphine pump got loose again. Oh. I watched the nurses enough to know what to do. Morphine? Yeah. Why are you giving her morphine? The doctors prescribed. Yeah, but she, she wouldn't want morphine. I know. She wanted to be clear. It was. It was all that Valium she was taking. That's the reason she was so crazy back then. And when she got clean in jail, after she was arrested, she told me uh, she'd never felt so clear. The clarity, she said, huh, uh, the clarity is astonishing. I remember those words, so I know she wouldn't want to be doped up. Once again, may I remind you, this isn't about you. 
I sh I'm sure even your sponsor would agree that in your mother's condition, the morphine is medically necessary. Is she? Uh, she's asleep. She used to tell me how when Grandpa died, he hadn't been talking for two weeks, and all of a sudden he sat up, opened his eyes wide, threw up his arms, and said, the weight has lifted, the weight of my sins. I feel so light, like I could float. And then he died. A smile on his face. That's how she wanted to go, she always said. I believe her vision of, of a good death changed somewhat over the years. Yeah. Me? I just want that light. What light? Oh, you know all those stories you hear about people whose hearts stopped. They talk about being in a tunnel and walking toward the bright light till their hearts were jolted on again. Yeah, I've been in that tunnel. There wasn't any light. What about you? What's your vision of good death? Honestly, <laughs> I don't know. You never thought about it? Come on. You never imagined your obituary in the Times? Well, maybe that. <laughs> and after all the accomplishments, she died peacefully, surrounded by family and loved ones. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. Yeah, ha. Uh -huh. You look good. You too. Oh, don't lie. I don't need it. One good part about getting old, getting free of all that. Well, not every aging woman gets free of that. Yeah, maybe it's the living outside. I always laugh when I hear women complaining about turning invisible at 50. They don't know. Invisibility is safety. Relatively speaking. How long have you been in supportive housing? How do you know? Oh, that's right. You're an investigator. You know everything about my life. Not everything. Five years. I'm ready for an independent place. But it's a long, long waiting list. I'll be dead before I get a kitchen bathroom of my own. You still right? Hello. I have a blog. Don't laugh. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Maybe some people read it. I have a tiny but faithful following under a pen name and a friend's account, which is why your investigator didn't turn it up. What do you write about? Recovery? Oh, God, no. Recovery is boring, and that's why it's so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I write about SRO life. Everybody talks about the homeless, but nobody talks about what it's like when you get inside. What it's like in those places. Hmm. You wouldn't believe the stories. Well, good for you. You still sing? No. Oh, not even in the shower? No. Oh, I used to love hearing you sing in the shower. When did we have a shower? That place on Avenue C. And how long did that last? I don't know. But it's the one I remember the best. I remember the place with the bathtub in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. At that, that time, you decided to take a bath before the party was over. <laughs> it was 5 in the morning, and I thought that would be a signal. Time to go home. Yeah, all I did was send the party into overdrive. <laughs> after you climbed in. <laughs> well, only after, oh, well, who was that guy? You know, the drummer that was in love with you? Several drummers were in love with yeah, you. Yeah, but that one, the, the one with the, you know the one I mean, he had dreads before it was a thing. I can't recall a single name. How oh, did we get so old? Speak for yourself. I'm in my prime. Ooh. You got grandkids? Mm, I wish. But I skipped the kids. You? Same. Married? Was. A couple of times. You? <laughs> no. Long-term relationships? You mean after you? You and I didn't...
Let me. No. 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 Just, just let me. No, get off of me. You make me weak. It's not weak to be sad. I'm mad, not sad. Not weak. They kill the weak ones. Hunt them down. He wasn't weak. He was the strongest. But they killed him. Fuck nonviolence. Where did that get him? Fuck martyrdom. Fuck dying. Fuck death. It's not just about him, is it? It's about your grandma, too, isn't it? And your grandpa. Wasn't it about a year ago he died? Not about to the day. I, I, I didn't know the day. We hadn't even met. My dad was still alive. My world was still one piece. Your world. Remember what you said when Sweet died? I'm schooled at losing folks. Only I keep flunking. Flunk, flunk, flunk. It's okay. No, it's not. You keep saying that. You always you'll say. Be, you'll be, you'll be okay. Don't do that. Don't hug me. Easy for you to say. You cry like burst pipes. And you never cry. What's worse? I can't. I, I can't. Okay. Then tell me a story about Sweet. Tell me about Sweet and the Reverend. Come on. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, a little orphan girl climbed on a bus from Mississippi all by herself. And she was so brave. She rode all the way to Chicago to her grandmama's house. Her granddaddy, too. It was like a gingerbread house, tiny and cozy. Her grandma made the best pies in the whole world. They called her sweet, sweet, sweet. Cuddle, cuddle. How are you doing, Mama Ben? Did you ever see your sister? No. But we were close. In Providence, we finally had a trail. Right. And then we left. Because you just had to get to New York. The trail went cold after that. I don't recall you taking any steps to look. When we were together, Trails do go cold in five years. Yeah, it might have been a different story if I'd had the money to hire a fancy investigator. Hmm. Did Mom ever ask you to find her? No. Huh. Well, that's curious. Seeing as how you owe her such a great debt, you'd think she'd call it in for that. I believe she made her peace with, with Don't not. Don't tell me that. I know my mother. She would never make her peace with not seeing my sister again. Losing my sister. That was what started the whole shit show. Everything my mother did, I mean, stupid, <coughs> crazy killer was all about my sister. Even if she did make you her substitute daughter, she wouldn't give that up. It was always about my sister. And you? If it was ever about me, that wasn't until she killed him. That did me a whole lot of good. Whoa, whoa, what was that? What? what? She, she just sat up. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're drunk. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're drunk. <laughs> I always could hold my liquor better than you. <laughs> you could always lie better than me. Has it occurred to you that your mother may not have brought up your sister in my presence? Or other matters related to your family? 
because she knew it would be painful for me. For you? Why? What did you tell her about me? What was your version of our story? How it ended? I did not speak with her about that. Then how would she know that it would have been painful for you? Your mother is a very perceptive woman. And although I don't know if she was like that when you knew her. Well, the value of fuck with her perception. Mm. What about before? Before it all started? I was 12. Uh, five lifetimes ago, I don't remember. I remember my mother vividly. But you were only five when she... <laughs> Six. It was my first day at school. And I remember because I had a bit of a tangle with a little white girl. What, schools? Couldn't have been integrated back then. Not in Mississippi, right? It didn't happen in school. I was on my way home, and my mother had told me which way to walk, but... Yeah, you never did like being told what to do. I wanted to walk where the trees were. It was cooler. I was looking up at the leaves, so I almost ran into her. She was standing in my way. It was the closest I'd ever come to one of them. I said something. I, I don't recall what, but it must have been friendly. I was curious. What was she like? I found out soon enough. She unleashed a barrage, words first, words I'd never heard, words my mother had protected me from. Then, when I failed to retreat, the words turned to stone. Did you tell me this story? No. What did you do? I ran, of course. I wasn't stupid. Actually, I was. Because when I got home, I told my mother I expected her to match, to march over to the little white girl's house and to give her and her mother a good tongue lash. <laughs> that would have been suicide back then in Mississippi. And I suppose it would be just fine now. <laughs> I'm the one who got the tongue whipping. That's the last clear memory I have of my mother alive. I remember the funeral. But that must have been months later. It was cold. So cold. I can't believe you wouldn't have told me that story. I can't believe you think I should have. That is how, that was somehow my duty to share with it with you, to educate you. I'm tired of the game. You weren't exactly playing the game. Huh. Hell, half the time you acted like you barely knew me. Like when one of your heroes invited you backstage and you'd introduce me as oh, someone who helps out with the show. Oh, like you were big enough for groupies. Like, that's all I was. But then I get it. I get it. It must have been a little embarrassing. What with the image you were working on, moving from token in the coffee houses to black power singer-songwriter. Oh, I must have been a little embarrassing. Indeed. The things that came out of your mouth. I knew you were naive when I met you, but I... <laughs> I didn't. was 16, for fuck's sake. But I didn't think you were stupid. I don't suppose it occurred to you what it would have done to my career if, if, if I'd been pegged as a lesbian singer at that point in time? It wasn't such a big secret. In our small West Village crowd? Yeah, oh, and you were aiming for the big time. Opening for Gil Scott Heron. Even if it was a late fill-in. <laughs> oh, you took care of that big time for me, didn't you? I could never show my face again. Not with the club owners, not with the agents, and definitely not with the other musicians. You made sure everyone knew who you were with your little minstrel show. Your whole set that night was a minstrel show. You always wanted to be a singer-songwriter. Nothing else mattered to you than that. No thing and nobody. It was your art. Your art. And now you had your big chance, and you didn't have the guts to sing your own songs. Ha! Huh, a set of spirituals. Only for Gil Scott. It was a tribute to Odetta. It was a cop-out, and you knew it. 
And you were pissed that I called you on it. And what would you call what you did? Showing you what you were doing. Putting the truth in front of you. Okay, okay, exaggerated truth. That's called parody. Glory, glory, and hallelujah. When I lay my, hmm, glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burden down. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I was stupid. I was hurt. I was mad. I was stupid. That was beyond stupid. Yeah, I just that was just the last five years of my life trailing in your shadow. The years other people spent finishing high school and going to college. Other people in your demographic. Well, but I had nothing. No diploma, no money, no job, no family. My father was dead, my mother was in jail for killing him, and who knows where my sister was. What about your big brother? My brother got a warrant out for your arrest. You thought I'd go back to that? I burned every bridge from L.A. to New York when we ran away, but that was okay, because I was with you. I can imagine being someone, someone smart and strong, talented and confident. I wanted to be just like you. I wanted to be you. And all I wanted was for you to be you. You were such a fierce little thing when I met you. But then, I don't know how or when, but you turned into a lap dog. So, you got bored with me. I threw away my life to run away with you, and you threw me out like last week's trash. And on my birthday, too? My 21st. You made a joke of it in front of people. People I thought were my friends, laughing, laughing. Yeah, me, too. I laughed, too. That was the worst part. So yeah, I went and made a fool of myself at your little gig, and you, you made a fool of me. The reason you ran away with me in the first place was because you couldn't face what was left, because you couldn't deal with your mother's truth about your adored preacher daddy, because it was easier to run. And apparently you spent the rest of your life doing just that, running. It's just as well. You never went to see her. It would have killed her to see what you've become. It would have killed her to see that her sacrifice was in vain. I know what she said. Who? Mom. What she said on the roof to the TV cameras. What she never told you. You saw it? Mm hmm On the news that night. I had a TV back then. An apartment. One of my stable periods. <laughs> it was hard to see her. She looked so small up there, but you could hear her voice real well. And what did she say? <laughs> now you're the one who wants the story. Why don't you ask her? Why would she tell me now, even if she could? Get it off her chest? Deathbed confession? <laughs> hey, Mama, didn't you want to tell her? You can talk, can't you? You were saving your voice for your last words, weren't you? Oh. Tell her. She told a Bible story. The one about the Canaanite woman. You remember that one, right? Your grandpa was a preacher, too. It's been a while. She came to Jesus for help. Her daughter had a devil. Jesus ignored her, brushed her off, told her she had, he had come for the Israelites. His disciples said to send her away. She was just a Canaanite after all, but she persisted. Finally, Jesus said, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Right. And then, <laughs> Mom made some little joke about what people feed their dogs, how she used to slip bites of liver to Snoopy when Dad wasn't looking. 
After she was done talking, the newscaster explained that the other rioters had appointed her their spokeswoman. She didn't offer to take your place as hostage. She took charge. She played white savior. <laughs> she played you. <laughs> Even the dogs. Yeah, well, give her this much, it worked. The guards didn't launch their incendiary devices, and you live. And yet, she never told me. All those years. And yet, you had to tell me now. You needed to destroy the one soft thing I had. You still don't get it, do you? About your little minstrel show. You call it parody, but you left out one small part. I can't believe it has escaped your memory. You mean the blackface? That part? Don't you dare cry. I'm not. <laughs> you still don't get it. It's not what the act revealed in you, or not just that. Nor what it did to my singing career, my reputation with my peers, that I couldn't face them after that. No, it's what it did to me. It was me I couldn't face. What did it reveal in me that I had been in love with you, had stayed with you five years, practically forever at that age, and youth is no excuse. I was old enough to know the possibilities. It wasn't my first day at school. I knew what you inherited and hadn't fully faced. But I chose not to dwell on that. I chose to let the dog sleep on. And once that rabid dog rose up and bit me in the face, it was me I hated, not the dog. I hated the girl who loved the dog. But as you say, I'm not the same person I was. I put that girl away because the girl that I am <laughs> fell in love with the logic of the law. And then, somehow, I fell in love with her. What a fool I was. And that's the gift you've given me by telling me the truth of what she said. Oh, it hurts. I won't lie. It fucking hurts. But nonetheless, it's a gift. Now, of course, that wasn't what you planned in telling me. Knowing that you had lost the war, knowing that you had deserved to lose, your plan was in your retreat to leave scorched earth and body parts with that ammunition you had left. But your plan failed because this will make me even stronger. My love for her, that was my last week link. And you took care of that. You burned away the last shred of Vulnerability, the ability to feel. You loved a flawed person, two flawed people. Fucked up, frankly. Yes. But you love them anyway, is that so unforgivable? No, I did wrong. Ugh, I did that thing, that thing I've worked so hard not to do. And I can't stand the feeling. The shame, the self-hate, instead of sitting with the feeling like my sponsor says, I do anything to, to, to stop it, to stop feeling it. And if getting high or drunk is not an option, or, or it doesn't work, I lash out. I push the pain on someone else. Oh so, yeah, I meant to hurt you. I'm just sorry. I know, I know. Pitiful that word is, sorry. How easy it is to say, so I don't expect you to forgive me. I don't ask for that, not for me. 
good for you. Be mad at me, not you. Mm. And not her. You can't forgive the dying. You can't carry it for life. You can carry it for life. You don't need to be any stronger. That's not what you need. What makes you... In my humble opinion. Well, thanks for that at least. I meant to hurt you too. Yeah, I know. When you were right. It's why I never went to see her. I didn't want her to see me how I was. It would have killed her. Mm -hmm. Hey, if I can live with my sorry self, sober, knowing what I've done, how I failed, everything, if I can, surely you can you? Can you live with you? Oh, well. The jury's still out. I don't know. I'm working on it, though. And believe me, I have so, so much more than you to forgive myself for. For her. Mom? 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 Take, take it easy. Don't take it. She always got her point across. Gone, 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 gone. Now it's my sins are gone. Oh, no, 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 please. Not that song. No. No. Stop, I beg you. You know that song. Yeah, I know that song. Because the one time you sang it for me. An amusing relic from your Bible camp days. It became an earworm for the rest of my days. Another thing to thank you for. Oh, no, no, no. I remember now. It became an earworm because you sang it all the time because you knew I couldn't stand it. Because you knew how it embarrassed me. Because, because you were so teasable. <clears throat> I should get the nurse. They'll want to know the time of death. What time is it? 11.59. Oh, Mommy. Mommy, what do I do now? What do we do now? Maybe. Try cutting the cork, the strings.
Hallelujah, when I lay my burden 